Is overclocking worth it? Hardware Unbox doesn't seem to think so, but are they right? In this video, we are going to find out. My name is Matt, I'm a former rocket scientist, and my goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. In the True or False series, I help you avoid the hype and misinformation by showing you the truth from a source you can trust. In a recent video, Steve from Hardware Unbox, responding to criticism about his Battlefield 6 results, claimed that CPU overclocking is a waste of time. It's the biggest nothing burger. Tim, his partner on the channel, doubled down on this claim by stating that you should simply work more hours to buy better hardware. If there's any discrepancy in price or whatever, work a couple of hours of overtime at your job. Steve then went on to insult other content creators by calling them narcissistic. Show extreme narcissistic tendencies. And for some reason, when responding to a viewer's question about one of my past videos, decided to attack my credibility. So is any of this true? Let's find out. In a video that I published in 2024, I compared a Tune 9700X to a Tune 7800X 3D to find out if the 9700X really was as bad as the vast majority of reviewers had claimed. It turns out that the 9700X was configured poorly by AMD at the factory with a super low TDP, such that in its stock configuration, the performance was poor. However, I showed that if you use PBO features and faster RAM, you could unlock a significant boost in performance, so much so that it was able to go head to head with the 7800X3D, which at the time was the king of gaming. Given that the 7800X3D is also much more expensive, I provided a quick step-by-step -step guide on how to extract max performance from the 9700X to help save viewers some money. This is something many viewers were extremely grateful for, especially given the overwhelming negative reviews of the 9700X. So you may be asking yourself, what's the issue? During that same video, I decided to spend some time digging into some of the negative reviews from larger channels. What I discovered was very concerning. Concerning. Hardware Unbox were conducting their CPU testing at ultra graphic settings, which resulted in a very small performance difference between the 9700X and 7700X. To test the relative performance of CPUs properly, you need to ensure that they are heavily loaded, as Gamus Nexus did when they tested the same game at lower settings. The 1080p medium result is tested in a carefully selected area of the city that creates a heavy CPU bind. As a result, there is a much larger performance gap for the 9700X over the 7700X. At the time, I pointed this issue out to Hardware Unbox, but they chose to ignore it. Up until very recently, when they started including 1080p medium results as well. This is strange because it shows that Steve now understands his mistake, but for some reason refuses to address it properly. This becomes clear when you look at the impact of graphic settings on performance. If we take any game, say Call of Duty Black Ops 6, and compare the 1080p performance at different graphic settings, you can see that at high settings, the game is clearly GPU bound, whereas at low settings the game is clearly CPU bound, which results in a massive 42% increase in performance. Running the same benchmark at medium settings helps, but the game is still heavily GPU bound, so it makes absolutely no sense to use medium settings to compare the relative performance of CPUs. To emphasize this point, if we now compare two different CPUs, you can see that not only does the difference in performance between the CPUs significantly reduce as the graphic settings are increased, but you would also get a wildly different conclusion as well. This is why it's important to heavily load CPUs when testing them and why the graphic settings you select really does matter. This is also why you can't trust the CPU benchmark shown by Hardware Unbox. Fast forward to a recent Hardware Unbox podcast where Steve attempted to justify his Battlefield 6 CPU benchmark results by claiming that overclocking is a waste of time. It's the biggest nothing burger. But he didn't stop there. He also implied that overclocking is a grift and called other reviewers narcissistic. Yeah, a lot of the guys that I've watched that are very toxic about this show extreme narcissistic tendencies. So furthermore, in the comments to that video, he also decided to take a shot at me in response to a question from a viewer. This seems like an overly aggressive and childish response to a simple question. It's also a blatant lie, which unfortunately appears to be par for the course for Hardware Unbox lately. I typically don't like to get involved in drama like this, and if it wasn't for one of my followers on X reposting it, I would have never seen it. But now that I have, if you're going to insult me and spread misinformation, then you are definitely going to get my attention. So let's take a quick look at the video in question and address some of the claims that he made. Hardware Unbox made a lot of claims during their podcast, and while it's not practical to cover all of them, these are the main ones that jumped out to me. Steve stated that he purchased a retail 285K for testing and claimed that he would be replacing his 9950X3D with it. So I just went and bought one, um, and I thought, you know, I'm probably going to plan on running that in my main system. I had a 9950X3D, and I thought, you know, 
could be pretty interesting to run an Intel CPU for a, a year or so and see how that all goes. And then later in the video, he claims that he still games on a 12900K. I, I game on a, a, a 12900K. So my question is, if he believes his own benchmarks, why would he replace a 9950X3D with a 285K? And if he did have a 9950X3D, why would he game on a 12900K when he could be gaming on a 9950X3D? Steve claimed that the Intel 200S boost feature changes quite a few things in the BIOS. Because it does change quite a few things. It's a sort of a one-click tuner. It only changes three settings, which ironically is on the chart that they chose to display in the background while he was talking about it. Steve stated that warranty is not really an issue with CPU overclocking. But it's not really a thing. So the fact that, you know, Intel say that this is covered under warranty, it's like, fine, whatever. And I actually agree. Steve claimed that the reason he doesn't overclock is that it's not guaranteed to work and that he has little faith in viewers' abilities. Uh, and that, that's, that right there is a huge problem with the whole overclocking thing and using your tuned settings to show how fast this CPU is. Because first of all, I have very little faith in random person's ability to, you know, state validate that like is it stable or not but later in the video when he acknowledges that they overclock ram which is also not guaranteed to work steve simply states that it's weird to question why they would do that yeah I mean, i'm sure people will sort of bring up the whole you know you enable the xmp profile mm -hmm. uh which is technically an overclock but you don't enable 200s boosts such a weird well, argument they both make fun of viewers at undervolt by claiming that it can be unstable a diehard AMD Ryzen fan will bang on about their undervolt and how great it is. <laughs> but though, that too can lead to stability problems and you may not even be aware of them. But given how much benefit undervolting can offer, instead of laughing at your viewers, why not try to help them by showing them how to check for stability? I've found that ADA64 offers the fastest way to determine if you have a stable undervolt. They attempt to justify why they overclock RAM, claiming that if it's on the QVL, it's guaranteed to work. Now. If you buy an AM5 CPU and it can't do DDR5 6000, you should be getting a full refund. I don't care what region you're in. This is simply not true. The QVL does not guarantee that a memory overclock will be stable. The Z790 motherboard refresh debacle is a great example of this, where ASUS, MSI, Gigabyte, and ASRock all claimed via their QVL that their four DIMM Z790 boards, such as the Aorus Z790 Master X, would support DDR5 8000 plus RAM. In reality, none of these four DIMM boards could run DDR5 8000 Plus without manual memory tuning. Furthermore, there is no guarantee that DDR5 6000 CL30 RAM will run on AM5 motherboards. If you try to run two DDR5 6000 CL30 64 gigabyte kits in a 4 DIMM AM5 motherboard, it will very likely not boot when you enable Expo. They claim that the vast majority of people load BIOS, load XMP, and then go play games. The vast majority of people load into the BIOS, they load up a memory profile, they save and exit, and they go play games. That's a very self-serving statement given the context of the video. If you constantly tell viewers that it's a waste of time. Overclocking's been kind of a, well, a waste of time, I think is probably the best way to put it for a long time. And scare them by telling them that it's unstable. In most instances are going to compromise stability. What do you expect? They claim that 9800X3D is at least 25% faster than the 285K. The 9800X3D is on average for gaming, depending on the game as you test and how you test them, it's at least 25% faster than the 285K. And tried to use social proof to back up their claims. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of benchmarks, not, I'm not just talking about mine, like a lot of benchmarks out there will show 35% average when testing like 20 games or more. This might be true for stock performance, but it's certainly not true when the CPUs are tuned, which is precisely why it's important to present these results. And finally, they claim that overclocking is a waste of time. Overclocking's been kind of a, well, a waste of time. They claim negligible performance increases. Whereas now, the amount of time and effort you have to put in for these negligible performance gains. And that it's a big nothing burger. Whenever we dedicate time and energy to looking into it, it's the biggest nothing burger. But the best part, 
when Tim tells viewers to just work more to buy better components. And buying the fastest product that you can get and running at stock. And if there's any discrepancy in price or whatever, work a couple of hours of overtime at your job. Unbelievable. So is overclocking worthwhile? The best way to answer this question is to look at some actual data, something Hardware Unbox failed to do. In my recent Is the 9800X3D Really Worth It video, I tuned, optimized, and compared four CPUs, the 9600X, 9700X, 265K, and 9800X3D. As you can see from the data, the performance increase for the 9600X was 17%. For the 9700X was 22%. For the 265K was 11%. And for the 9800X3D was 13%. Definitely not what most would call negligible performance increases. For my Should You Buy the Ryzen 9 9950X3D or Core Ultra 9 285K video, I tuned, optimized, and compared a 9950X3D against a 285K. As you can see from the data, I was able to increase the performance of the 99 50X3D by 17% and the 285K by 10%. Again, definitely not negligible. I also decided to run some tests for the 285K in games, comparing stock performance with XMP against the Intel 200S boost feature and a manual overclock. As you can see, the manual overclock resulted in 10% increases in performance, whereas in most cases, the 200S boost feature actually reduced performance. So it's not something I would recommend, especially if you're using higher speed RAM. But what about GPUs? In my Should You Buy an RTX 5070 or RX 9070 video, I compared a tuned RX 9070 against a tuned RTX 5070. As you can see from the data, the increases in performance for both cards was around 12 to 13% in synthetic benchmarks, which again is not negligible. In fact, this same margin was maintained when I looked at games, with increases of over 10%. Furthermore, I got similar results in my Should You Buy an RTX 5070 Ti or RX 9070 XT video with slightly lower boosts in performance due primarily to the use of heavily factory overclock cards. And also in my The Ultimate Sapphire Nitro Plus AMD GPU Showdown video, where I again compared heavily factory overclocked cards. What's interesting is that when you use the one clock auto overclock feature, the boost in performance is relatively small. That said, one clock overclock features like 200S Boost are clearly intended for consumers with limited tech experience, not for tech experts that should be confident enough and competent enough to manually overclock the components themselves. So is tuning a scam or grift? Technology has certainly made it easier to scam people, as evidenced by the recent EasyPass scam. So I'm sure that there are people out there that use PC tuning to scam inexperienced users. But that doesn't mean everyone involved with PC tuning are grifters. If you show viewers the performance benefits of tuning, show them exactly how to achieve these results, explain that the results are silicon dependent, your results will of course vary based on silicon quality, and show them how to test for stability, Kahu to check the stability of your memory subsystem, and A to 64 system stability test to check the stability of your undervolt and overclock. And you deliver all of this via free step-by-step -step guides on YouTube, how exactly is that a grift? Claiming that all overclockers are grifters is similar to stating that all tech YouTubers are knowledgeable. PC tech, as the name implies, is a technical domain, and therefore, to be able to give meaningful advice requires technical expertise. So when Hardware Unbox asks, has anyone reputable shown this? It clearly infers that I'm not credible. I would argue that my extensive engineering background is much more meaningful than, say, a background in tech journalism. And I wasn't just any engineer, I was one of the best. I designed the world's fastest helicopter, I led AI for the world's largest defense contractor, and I won the prestigious Collier Trophy for the greatest achievement in aerospace. So is overclocking a waste of time? Based on the data presented in this video, the answer is a definitive no. The average performance boost you can achieve is not only meaningful, but significant. What Hardware Unbox attempted to do is suppress negative feedback around the quality of their data by painting overclocking and anyone that participates in it as scammers, grifters, and narcissists. Yeah, it's like really narcissistic. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Their many outlandish claims, none backed by data, are not only easy to disprove, but also incredibly offensive to those of us that attempt to inform our viewers instead of manipulate them. And that's the point. The objective of tech channels should be to inform viewers. And the best way to do that is to show both stock and tune performance, not to try to force everyone to run their systems at stock by spreading lies or scaring them into thinking that it's difficult and risky. So what is this really about? 
Over the last few months, Hardware Unbox has received a lot of criticism about being biased. And unfortunately, I couldn't replicate the huge gains that Hardware Unbox saw. This is why Steve desperately attempted to prove that he is unbiased by claiming that he replaced his 9950X3D with a 285K and that he uses a 12900K for gaming. Well, I game on a, a a 12900K. Which makes absolutely no sense. This may surprise many of you, but I genuinely don't think Hardware Unboxed is biased. People point to their recent AMD Fine Wine video as Steve showing bias towards AMD, but I don't think that was intentional. I think he truly thought that drivers were responsible for the increase in performance. The same way he truly thought that a Windows update was responsible for a 20 plus percent increase in performance. The problem isn't bias, it's a fundamental lack of understanding. Steve appears to lack technical competence, which in turn leads to poor data and poor conclusions. This would explain why he pushes back so hard on overclocking, and would also explain why he uses scare tactics to try to convince others not to overclock. If viewers demand to see tune performance, it will only highlight his lack of technical competence. And that is, in my opinion, the fundamental fundamental issue here. Steve appears to be deathly afraid that viewers will discover that he is incompetent. This would explain why he calls other content creators narcissistic, why he calls overclocking a grift, why he doesn't take feedback well, why he blames others when he screws up, and why he felt the need to attack me in a comment on his video. He wants the naysayers to shut up so that he can, in his own words, I'm just, people. at this point in time, so sick of it. I think I just want to get on with doing the reviews the way we've done them. Remember, it's not rocket science, it's Lego. My goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. Thank you for watching the next video in the Blackbird PC Tech True or False series. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit the like button and subscribe so that you don't miss out on future episodes as I attempt to guide you on your PC Tech journey. And if you'd like to support the channel further and gain access to some really great perks such as live Q&A sessions, please also consider joining our new school community. Bye for now.